Courtney with Missouri Star Quilt Company, and we're going to make a Lone Star Quilt. Yes, you! In this class, we're going to talk about selecting fabrics, how to go about picking these fabrics for your quilt. We're going to make strip sets, then we'll cut those up. We're going to talk about how to cut and stitch your diamonds. Then we're going to add your background fabric, and guess what? There are no Y seams. I know people are afraid of those Y seams. We don't have any in this quilt, so we'll take the fear out of that. I love, love Lone Stars. I've made more than a dozen, and I just keep having fun with them every day. I have learned so much and so many little tips and tricks that have made my Lone Stars even more successful the more I sew, and I'm going to share them with you. So let's get sewing. Let's talk about the supplies you're going to need for class. You are going to need four one-half yard cuts of fabric for your Lone Star, the actual diamond pieces. We'll go over in a little bit how I chose my fabric so I can help you choose yours if needed. Then you are going to need a yard of fabric for your border and also a three-quarter yard cut for your binding. I use the same fabric. Then you're going to need some spray starch. I like to use this quilting and crafting spray by Faultless. You're going to need a small ruler to mark your quarter of an inch seam allowance. I like using the two and a half inch by eight inch. You're also going to need a six and a half by 24 inch ruler. I like to use a creative grid. I also like these magic pins. You're going to need to pin. We're going to pin a lot. So I like these magic pins. They're nice and small and very sharp. You need something to mark your fabric with when we mark our seam allowances. I like the sew line pencil for that. It needs to be a product that's going to not show up on your top when we're finished. You also need some thread. I like a 50 weight thread. I like to have a little pair of snips on hand. And of course, you're going to need a rotary cutter. And a good pair of scissors is always great to have. Let's talk about fabric selection. I chose this line called Cottage Blue by Robin Pickens for Moda. I find that it's easiest if you start with your border. This is what I chose for my border, this nice pretty blueprint. Then you can go, you can stay in the line like I did. I chose a variety of scales in my fabrics. You don't have to stay in the line if you don't want to. You can find with our background fabric, we'll talk about more how I chose that background fabric later. This is not part of the line. It, it was a great choice, but it wasn't part of the line. Kind of keep your eye for when you're choosing your fabric is your burst. Now I'm going to show you what the burst is. This fabric stays in the same position through the whole quilt. So I like to put a, what I call a zinger or something that's really going to stand out in that burst. So that's why I chose that yellow. The other fabrics you can think about when we're getting ready to cut is what you want to be at your point. And I chose this blue to be at my point. So let's get ready to cut. Before you cut a thing, I want you to starch. I want you to starch like you've never starched before. Use a heavy starch. Make sure you iron it dry. A lot of classes that I have, they're spraying the starch nice and heavy. They're giving it a quick press and they keep going. Well, then their fabric's stretchy again. You need to press it dry. Do not use steam ever in the class. You're using the starch at this point and you will not need steam, trust me. But please starch. You will have a lot more success with this quilt if you starch. We're gonna be cutting fabric on the bias in a little bit. The bias is stretchy. The starch is preventing it from stretching so much, okay? So once your fabric is nice and starched, you're going to cut four two and a half inch strips by width of fabric from each of your star fabrics. It doesn't matter what position they're in, every fabric gets cut the same for the star points. So we're going to cut four two and a half inch strips. I'm going to even up my edge here. And we're just gonna cut two and a half inch strip here. and you'll cut three more strips. So we're going to cut off this edge, cut it into a 20 inch strip because your strips are prettier. When we sew in 20 inch strips, you don't get as distracted. They stay, my seams say, stay a lot straighter when I'm using a 20 inch strip as opposed to the 40. I'm gonna show you how I starch, which I know will be fun. So I really love this magic quilting and crafting spray. Um, it's a fairly new product on the market from Faultless. I have found that I don't use as much 
And this aerosol can really has a lovely spray that you'll see in a moment. And you really don't have to, on this starch, I really don't have to get too heavy. And you're going to press this dry, 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 dry. All right. So we're going to pick this up. And this, and you may not be able to tell by its drape, but this is a lot stiffer than it was prior. It lays nice and flat. You won't have any, any trouble, OK? So get all of your strips cut. Get them cut in half. And we'll get ready to sew. All right, so now that we've cut our fabrics, you should have eight of each strip that is, a pro that is two and a half inches by approximately 20 inches because we cut four strips of each times with the fabric and cut them in half. So sh you should have eight of each of these of four different fabrics. I have these laying here. Now is the time to choose your A, B, C, or D, and A, B, C, and D if you haven't already. We have provided you with a graphic. I want you at this point to sliver trim off of the end enough so you can see your fabric, and I want you to label each one A, B, C, or D. You're only working with four fabrics and you think, I'm gonna keep those straight. Well, I can tell you from a dozen and a half Lone Stars that once you start cutting these up and things get moved around, it gets confusing, and I have many times forgotten now, which one was my A and which one was my D. So please have a little graph next to you. Have your reference sheet so you know what to refer to, okay? So once you have that done, now we're ready to make our strip sets. We are going to make four different strip sets, and you are going to make two of each. And I always, always lay them out just like this. Some people lay them vertical. I just like to lay mine horizontal, but I'm lucky enough where I have the space next to my sewing machine to do that. So this is my, again, this is my A fabric. My B fabric, I'm going to move over two and a half inches. This is another reason why I love my little two and a half inch ruler. I'm going to move that ruler over two and a half inches and line it up with the end of this top piece. Okay? Then I'm going to flip my B fabric up on my A. Okay, nice and flat. Then I'm going to grab this end, the far end. Now, if you'll notice, my selvage is there. I almost put my selvages to the right. That'll eventually get cut off, and that way everything is, to me, it's cleaner. So I usually keep my selvages to the right. So I'm grabbing this fabric. I'm grabbing it by this because when I get to the machine, I'll remember where my thumb is. That's where I'm going to sew because it's very easy to pick this up and start sewing at the other end. Okay, so I'm trying to, trying to help you because I've turned them too. So if you grab that, you'll know, okay, that needs to go in the machine. Okay, so let's get this sewn. I have my machine set at a 2-0, so a little bit smaller because since we're doing subcutting, I'd like to make my stitch length a little bit shorter, okay? I don't find a need to pin my strips. We've got these starched, they're not moving. You'll also might notice the speed of my sewing machine. I'm usually a pedal to the metal girl, but I'm looking for accuracy here. So I slowed my machine down or don't press it as hard, however you need to do that, but you don't want to go as fast as you normally do if you're a fast sewer. So now I'm ready to add my C strip to this set. So again, I will lay my two and a half inch ruler there to see because we're offsetting by two and a half inches. And you'll see why when we go to cut. I'm going to put this strip on top of this one. Again, go to the end. That selvage end is there. I'm going to grab it by that corner. 
and take it to the machine. I'm also here using an accurate quarter inch seam. You want to have either, if you're going to use a quarter inch foot, if you have a mark on your machine, a quarter inch seam allowance is very important to this quilt as well. So again, laying my two and a half inch ruler on there, flipping up, grabbing from this end, again, my selvage is there, and off to the machine. Okay, so there's my first strip set. All nice and pretty, all nice and sewn. Now we need to press this. When you press it, I like to press normally away from my top fabric. So whatever your first fabric was, I press all my seams down. If you decide you want to press them up, that is just great. Just make sure you press them all, all of your strip sets the same way, either all up or all down. Again, no steam. We've already starched, so these seams are gonna lay nice and flat. Go back and hit this one again. Okay, there's our nice flat strip set. So when you lay it on your mat, that top piece should be nice and even with, a, with your line on your mat, and this should be nice and straight across the bottom there. So you're going to have two that look like this, okay? Then you are going to do a strip set that looks like this. You're going to start with B at the top then add your C, then your D, then your A, okay? And again, you're gonna make two strip sets that look like that. Then you are going to make two strip sets that look like this. You're gonna start with your C at the top. Then you add your D, your A, and your B. And last but not least, you're going to start with your D at the top, and you're going to add A, B, and C. So all in all, you should have two of each strip set, so a total of eight strip sets. And now we are ready to cut our diamond shapes. You'll see that my top strips nice and straight across that top line here on my mat, which is great. I use this, um, any ruler that's long enough with a 45 degree mark on it is great, but I like this creative grid. Right here, you can see the 45 degree angle on our ruler, that's gonna be very important. So you wanna make sure that whatever ruler you're using has that 45 degree mark, okay? So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to line up that 45 degree mark right on one of the lines on my sewing mat so I know it's nice and straight. Then I'm going to move my ruler over to make sure that I'm not, I wanna make sure that I'm on just on the inside of all of my ends of my fabric and I am. So I'm gonna make my first cut. Don't be scared, you guys can do it. Okay, ready? Okay, you are not going to need this. Now, you're going to line up again your 45 degree mark on your ruler on this line on the mat. Now, we're going to go over two and a half inches. So if you can see this on the mat here, there's one and on the ruler, there's one inch, two inch, and then I've got this little half inch here. So that's two and a half. Now, in a, in a perfect world, and this looks actually pretty good, your line should be on your line, your 45 degree line should be there on that line on the mat. This should line up perfectly with the edge of your fabric, and it does. So now you're ready to cut your first diamond shape. OK, 
Okay, now we're ready to cut our second diamond shape. You're doing the same thing. You're gonna move over two and a half inches. Line up that mat. Line up those lines here and on the edge. Look at that. So this means that with, the, with this line working out perfectly with the edge of my fabric, my two and a half inch line, that means that I pressed well and it means that my sewing, um, my seam allowance was accurate. If this is getting off at all, that is why. And the more accurate we are at this point, the more, um, the more success you're going to have with your Lone Star, okay? And there are times, and you'll see when we get to the end of our seam here, you have a little bit of wig wiggle room. So if you need to re-straighten up the edge of your diamond shapes, do it. You will be happier in the end. Oh, look at that. That lines up exactly. Yay. Okay, you need one more. Line it up there. Oh my goodness, all four of these look good. Okay. And see, you've got a little bit of wiggle room here. So if you need to straighten up and even up an end, you're good, okay? All right. And there's your four diamond shapes, okay? You are almost there. So go ahead and cut up all of your strip sets into diamond shapes. Keep them all in a nice stack of your A strip set, your B strip set, your C and your D. I usually pin them. And now we're ready to go to the sewing machine and sew them into our diamonds. All right, we're ready to sew our large points together. So what you're going to need, you're going to need one of your diamonds out of your A, B, C, and D strip. You're going to need one strip that starts with your B fabric, one that starts with your C, and one that starts with your D. Okay, when you lay these out like that, there's our pretty diamond, okay? So now we're ready to sew our first two sets together. If you were not a pinner before, you need to be a pinner now. Even non-pinners need to be a pinner here. You cannot eyeball this. Trust me, I've been sewing for 30 years. I still can't eyeball it. So please use the pen and use the marking method. You will be much more successful. Okay, so this, this is the first piece we're going to sew. On the right side, I am going to mark my quarter of an inch seam right where these two fabrics meet, okay? So there's my mark. Then I'm going to come down here. Mark it again. Then I'm gonna come down here. Mark it again. Okay. We are going to flip this over onto that. That's where we're going to sew. So I'm going to mark my seam allowance on this side. Again, a quarter of an inch, and it's hard to see my, my thread because I used gray here, but I am marking my pencil right over that seam there. This is why I like this little ruler again because it doesn't get in the way. If I was trying to manipulate that 24 inch ruler, it'd be everywhere. So that's why I like a smaller ruler for this. Okay, so we're marked. Now we're ready to pin everybody. Okay, so what we're going to do, we are going to pin from the back on this top one, right at that seam, right where my pink mark is. We're coming through the front there. We're making sure that I'm not in my second fabric. And then I'm going to go in right on that seam allowance there and go to the back. Okay, then I want you to hold that pin straight up and down between your, between your first two fingers there. You're gonna hold that straight up and down, real nice. Keep that pin vertical. Then you're gonna come in, and this is why I like tiny pins. I want you to come in and take the smallest bite you possibly can right next to that, right in front of that pin. You don't wanna come in and do this because what are you pinning? We need to pin right where that pin is, so that's why I want you to get a real tight, tight pin in there, okay? Once that pin is there, you can take that pin out, and we're gonna pin our next seam, okay? And again, we're gonna go in right at that seam there. I'm gonna check it on this side, yep, looks good. There's the mark on that side. Again, hold it straight up and down. And we're gonna go right in front of that pin. 
smallest bite I can. It's being stubborn there. There we go. Take that pin out and do the next one. No pinning sometimes isn't your favorite chore, but it'll be worth it, trust me. Trust me. All righty. So we've got all three seams pinned. We are going to the sewing machine, quarter inch seam allowance all the way down. You should have this little tail at the top and a tail at the bottom, looks good. Let's get that sewn. I know it's not part of the class. Please do not sew over your pins, no matter how skinny they are. All righty. All right, our first section is sewn. Let's open that up, see how we did. Oh yeah, looks pretty good. All right, now we're ready to mark and pin our next strip set. Okay, we're marking our quarter inch here. Okay, then this will go over here, so I'm gonna mark this side. And I keep them laid out like you see them here when I'm sewing at home because, again, you can flip them. And I've had people in class that just had them stacked up and just pulled off the pile, and invariably they'll have one that's backwards. So it's very easy to get turned around with this little project. So, All right, we're back to our pinning again. Also, if you have a needle down position on your sewing machine that's able to have the needle stop in the fabric, I would recommend you use it. Just kind of makes that stay in place when you're pulling the pin out. Okay. All right, we're looking good there. I always test and hold it open just to make sure everything looks good. Let's mark our last one. We almost have a diamond, you guys. Now, if you invariably did this, which I've done, trust me, just be very careful and using a seam ripper, take out a stitch at a time. Don't try to, normally when I use a seam ripper, I get under here and I'll just push that seam ripper up. You don't wanna do this here. You've got a lot of bias, you're gonna stretch it. So just go through with your seam ripper very gently and take those out, flip it back up the way it should be and then place it back on your fabric, okay? So we are marked, are we marked here? Let's mark this last side. Ready. Ready, 
you guys, you have a diamond. We're gonna press all the seams in one direction. Again, we're going to press, we're not going to iron. Be very gentle. Voila, there's your diamond, okay? Let me turn it around so our A is at the top. You are going to go ahead and make eight diamonds. They are all going to look the same. Once you make your eight diamonds, get them all pressed, then we're ready to add our background fabric. Alrighty, so let's talk about your background fabric. The background can be the trickiest part when you're choosing what you like and what will look good with your points. Now you probably already have chosen background fabric for your Lone Star that you're making today and that's just great. I, in my travels with my Lone Star, have found that I normally don't pick out my background fabric until all of my points are done or at least half of my points are done. Then I take it to the fabric store I'm lucky enough, I have 11 at my disposal here in town, 11, 12, and I lay them on the bolts of fabric, see what makes that star pop. This one was tricky. We, I had probably, there was, I think there was five of us and I kept calling in reinforcements in the one shop. I just could not find a fabric that I liked. I tried, we tried a light yellow, I tried a lighter blue, we went with green, nothing, nothing was jumping out and then the suggestion was made, let's try purple. So then we started with the purple. We must have had 30 bolts of purple, 20 stacked up on laying these out. It's a lot of fun and it's great to have other opinions <laughs> on this because I would not have chosen purple. So, and it, I think it looks fun. So don't be committed to your fabric ever. And sometimes I've already cut my background and then went, I don't really like that, I'm gonna change it. So just have fun with it and use what you have right now, but keep in mind in the future, maybe you wanna take your points to the store and play with some colors, okay? So you are going to cut your background fabric, you're going to cut it into two 14 inch strips and one 10 inch strip. You're going to cut four 14 inch squares and four 10 inch squares. And this is what you're going to get. And then once you cut your squares, I want you to cut them in half on the diagonal, okay? So there we have our half square triangles. Then we're going to add these to our diamond points. So I kind of lay them here. We are going to make one quarter of the quilt at a time. And then you're gonna make four quarters and put them together. So I lay this out. We're gonna do this one quadrant here. that there. So your bigger squares are going to be in the corner and your smaller ones are going to be meeting here. Now I have, I had you cut these larger than what you need because if I had you cut these exact and your Lone Star points weren't, weren't quite the same size, you might end up cutting off these points when you put your border on. You went to all this work. You do not want to cut your points off at this point. So I gave you room, a little bit of wiggle room, so we can go back. We'll go ahead and trim those off, these outside corners off, when your top is together. So don't worry that this isn't going to line up. It's not. So you don't worry about that. So let's take our first diamond. And I'm going to turn this over onto itself. I'm going to bring this triangle up so that there's about a quarter of an inch of background fabric showing out of the bottom, okay? That will give me all of the extra at the top, which is where I want it. I am not going to pin. Yay, aren't you excited you don't have to pin? I'm gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna sew that first seam.
let's, let's go ahead and we're going to press that. And I'm going to press it away from the diamond. And when you are done sewing this, this should line up perfectly with the edge of your Lone Star point. Okay, and it does. Now we're going to flip this over onto this one. And I'm going to bring that point up again. I'll show you on the back side. So you've got about that much point hanging off at the bottom, okay? That looks good. Yes, that's off. That's perfect. We're going to press this again away from the diamond. I, and I'm pressing away from the diamond because there are less seams out here, and that's the natural way to me that this background wants to go. You've got one fabric here, so pressing just makes it nice and flat. If we were to press it in, we'd be dealing with all these seams and it wouldn't lay as flat. So that's why I like pressing away from the diamond. Okay, so we have one eighth of your quilt done. Let's do the next part. And it doesn't matter if you add this one first or the small one first, the big one or the little one, makes no difference. You can be consistent, but again, doesn't. So I'll just go ahead and do the small one first since that's what we did before. Again, I have the little piece hanging out of the top there. Take that to the machine. Okay, so we're ready to add our last, our last piece of this set. I'm going to flip this over onto this side. Make sure that's nice and straight, it is. I'm going to move this up. So I've got that little piece hanging off the bottom. Go and show you that on the back. I have that little triangle hanging off and that's right. Okay, and then let's get ready, let's sew it. Get this last one ironed. We've got these big pieces there. You can just go ahead and cut those off. 
Now we're ready to put our two halves, or our two eighths together to make a quarter. Okay, so let's get those. We're gonna, we're going to mark just like we did before, okay? This time we have an extra seam to mark because we have to mark up in here now. So we're going to, this will be flipped over on there like that. So I'm going to mark this side on my quarter inch. Okay, guess what we're gonna do now? We're gonna pin. I bet you didn't see that coming, did you? Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing we did before. You should be good at this. here I will go ahead and pin that point. Okay. All right. And then here I just pin every little bit. It's not a There's no seams to match out here. So. There we're all pinned. Let's go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew that. to press this but let me show you something if, if these little dog ears are bothering you that are on here on your points of your lone star just go ahead and cut them off they're they can stay they can leave but if if they're if you want them out of there you can go ahead and get those out of there just cut them off all right now we're ready looky we got a quarter let's get that pressed now at this point I'm going to suggest pressing this seam open Okay, eventually when we get our star together, we're gonna have a lot of intersections there, a lot of fabric. So I recommend that you press this open, okay? There's a 
one quarter of your Lone Star. All right, looks good. I want you to make four of these units. They're gonna look exactly the same. All right, so you have all four of your quadrants done. So let's go ahead and make a half. So let's put two quadrants together. There you go. Again, we're going to mark, we're going to pin, okay? Same old, same old, you know the drill. And it doesn't really matter which fabric you mark on to mark that seam there, just so you can see it. That's all I'm going for. Since I'm flipping this over and that's going to be my seam, this is where I'm going to mark. down here where it meets I will go ahead and pin right there so I know everything's all nice and even when I get to the end. Let's go ahead and put one or two pins up here. And this may not be even either when you meet these. These might be, one might be longer than the other. This is, this is a great thing. It's, it's even so that's good. But. Don't worry if it's not, because that'll be part of when you're trimming your top. another tip make sure you stop sewing before you put your finger under there to grab your pin or that needle bar will hit your finger and it doesn't feel very good ask me how I know Two halves are together. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to press those seams open once again. That looks great. It looks even across the bottom. Let's move over here. So this looks great. It's even across the bottom there. This looks good. This intersection here, I was, the, I kind of watch that. Sometimes that's my favorite intersection because, especially with this, because the background is so dark up against that yellow, I want that to be pretty precise in there. All right, so you're gonna make two halves. And then we're gonna join them into a hole. Okay, so there's our two halves. We're gonna turn those into a whole quilt here. So guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna mark all the way across both sides once again. So let's turn this so I can mark, mark, mark.
if you notice too, I usually start pinning here on a fabric, not necessarily at the end. I do that last. And that's because I'm more concerned about lining these up than I am those outsides. middle when I'm pinning it should go right in the middle your pin should go right in the middle of where those seams meet and then it also should come out where those seams meet on the back side and then you know that your center is centered okay and that will be a little tricky to put that extra pin in there because it is a lot of well, there's a lot of fabric there but And this, then we're ready to go to the machine again. All righty. Are you excited? It's your last seam, you guys. Yay. Let's go press this. I'm going to go ahead and press this seam open. And I'm pressing it open for no other reason than there's a lot of seams here meeting and it'll lay a little bit flatter than if you were to press to one side. Okay. And flip it over and give it a press from the front. All right, you guys, and there's your Lone Star. Yay! All righty. There it is. In all its glory. Okay? All right, so how do we get rid of all this? So we're going to trim that. So what I do is I go around on each of my sides, and I'm looking. Oh, I've got a good inch there, and I've got a good inch here. 
inch and an inch. That looks good. Gonna have an inch here, I know. So at least an inch there. So I bet there'll be an inch here. So what I'm looking, still looking at, I'm lining up this inch. There's an inch. I'm right at my point here. I'm right at my point here. I've got an inch. So I'm just going to leave it an inch. If you'd like, you can come back in and you can make yours a quarter of an inch. So when you add your next border, your border will hit it exactly at the point. I like mine to float. It's called floating when the points don't exactly meet your next color. So I like mine to float. So what I'm going to do, if you have a big square ruler at home too, this is a great place to use it. I'm going to go ahead, I'm laying this inch mark right here on my point. I'm just going to cut that away. Then I'm going to move over here. I'm going to lay the ruler even with this edge to make sure I have a nice angle here. And I'm going to cut this next corner. And I will go around and do that to the whole quilt top till you have a nice square quilt and it's ready for your borders. All right, so now you know how to make a Lone Star quilt. We went over a bunch of things today. We went over borders a little bit. You can put one border on, you can put as many borders as you like. If you want your quilt to get larger, just keep adding borders. Have fun with that. You may decide to change your points on your Lone Star. Maybe what you thought was going to be your outside points at the beginning of your sewing Maybe they'll become your center. Before you add that background fabric, don't be afraid to play with your diamonds. Maybe point those diamonds with your outside points on the center. Maybe you'll like that better. Just play. Also, what I have found, maybe you want to scrap up your Lone Star. Take a look at this Lone Star that I did using a jelly roll. Now you must be careful when you're starching your jelly roll strips. Do a test strip. I found that my jelly roll strip only shrunk in length and only a little bit not width so you still have that I still had that two and a half inches I also cut my jelly roll strips into 11 inch strips to make it even scrappier out of 11 inch strips you can get two strip sets and I went ahead and made the same amount that I would need for the for the same size that we did and I had a ball then I made too many I had plenty left so I did that fun inside border but have fun. I really enjoy doing the jelly roll. I hope you enjoyed this class with me and Missouri Star Quilt Company. Have a great day. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.